I don't know whether you've heard, but there's been a rebellion in London. No, not that kind of rebellion. I'm talking about an extinction rebellion. So starting last week, four sites across London were taken over by climate protesters. Now these weren't major sites, you know, they were kind of out of the way places like Oxford Circus or Waterloo Bridge. I mean, who's ever even heard of those places? Now these protests got a lot of attention, they're still getting a lot of attention. But what is Extinction Rebellion actually asking for? And how does that fit in with our understanding of climate change? Well look, I'm a climate scientist, so I'm not going to tell you what to think about these protests. In fact, I'd love to know what you think, leave it in the comments below. But I am going to help you put these protests in context and understand what is going on with them. Okay, so firstly let's talk about Extinction Rebellion's demands. And first up is the demand that the UK government tell the truth about climate change. This struck me at first as slightly odd. I mean, we don't have a government, thankfully, here in the UK that deny the world is warming or deny that that's caused by humans, unlike some politicians around the world. <coughs> but actually, if you look a little bit deeper, what Extinction Rebellion are asking for is for the UK to declare a climate emergency. This makes a lot more sense because while we admit that climate change is happening and that it's caused by humans, we still kind of treat it like a bit of a nuisance that will hopefully kind of sort itself out if we just tinker around a little bit, rather than a bloody huge mess of a problem that we really haven't got to grips with yet. The second demand from Extinction Rebellion is that the UK cuts its greenhouse gas emissions. Right, so no surprise there, in order to stop global warming we need the world to get to net zero greenhouse gas emissions as soon as as possible. Okay, but what Extinction Rebellion are actually asking for is for the UK to get to net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2025. 2025! That's in less than six years, and we're talking about completely redoing how we get our electricity, our transport, our heating, everything. I mean, often when we talk about these big changes in short time frames, there's a reasonable question to be asked about whether it's politically possible. In this case, changing all that in just six years? I think there's a reasonable question about whether it's physically possible. But I do think it's possible to see where this call is coming from. We know we need to get to net zero as soon as possible for the whole world. And Britain is one of the richest countries in the world. We should be as ambitious as possible and aiming to get to net zero as soon as we can. As my supervisor said to me while I was still studying for my PhD, Adam, this isn't his real voice, Adam, you should aim to hand in your thesis early because if you're late, and you inevitably will be late, then you'll still be relatively on time. Anyway, I think you get the point. Now, Extinction Rebellion's third and final demand took me completely by surprise. They are asking for a citizens' assembly on climate change. This is something that I'd never really heard or thought about much before, but a citizens' assembly like this would be drawn from a cross-section of the British public, and it would take inspiration from what has happened in the Republic of Ireland. A citizens' assembly in Ireland was instrumental in overturning the long-standing ban on abortion in the Republic of Ireland. The citizens' assembly also advised that the country should strengthen its climate ambition. Now. What would a citizens' assembly potentially do over here? Well, we're talking about huge structural changes to our country in order to get to where we need to be on climate change. In order to do that, we need high levels of public engagement and public buy-in and public understanding of what's going on with climate change. Setting up a citizens' assembly might just help achieve that. Okay, but what about Extinction Rebellion's tactics? Well, the idea is to use non-violent civil disobedience. In other words, to be as mischievous as possible without actually hurting anyone. I actually saw a mother on Waterloo Bridge by the Extinction Rebellion there, trying to explain the nuances of this to her daughter. Mummy, are they being very bad? No, they're not being very bad. They're just trying to cause as much trouble as possible in order to upset the police, but not to actually hurt anyone. 
Anyway, I really don't envy that parent having to explain the nuance of being naughty enough to upset the police, but not to cause serious problems. Anyway, these strategies aren't exclusive to these occupations that have been happening in London. There was also a pretty cheeky protest in Parliament recently. And we are not slaves to the Naughty, past. naughty, Ed Miliband. But of all the protests that Extinction Rebellion have carried out, this latest action has for sure got the most attention. For me, as a Londoner, it's been kind of magical to see these areas of this city that I know and love so well completely transformed. But then again, I haven't been commuting through these areas and I already care a lot about climate change. It's understandable that these protests among the more general public have been somewhat divisive. In fact, a majority of the British public polled said they disapprove of the methods that these protesters have taken. But it's important we talk about the hidden fourth aim of Extinction Rebellion. Now, this isn't one of the central three goals, but it's surely part of the point, and that is to get people talking about climate change. Now, I've expressed frustration for years about how we talk about climate change, or rather, how we don't talk about climate change. I've even made videos about it. But Extinction Rebellion have surely succeeded at getting people talking. There have been huge amounts of headlines about the topic over the last few weeks. Now, this isn't just down to Extinction Rebellion, of course. There have also been the school climate strikes, which have seen over a million kids in over 100 countries taking to the streets to demand action on climate change. Here in the UK, we also saw a primetime David Attenborough documentary called Climate Change The Facts. It feels like, for once, we're starting to think and talk about climate change and give it the attention that it deserves. For me, that's incredible. So where are we now with the rebellion? Well, to date, there have been over 1,000 arrests of protesters. Arrests being one of the central ways that Extinction Rebellion controversially want to cause disruption. Extinction Rebellion are still protesting in Parliament Square and now have the backing of the Labour Party. That's the opposition party here in the UK. So there's no sign that this protest is going away any time soon. So that's where we are today with Extinction Rebellion. But what do you think of the organisation? Is it something that you think you'd want to join? Or does it sound to you like the wrong way to tackle climate change? And if it is, what do you think is a better way? I'd genuinely absolutely love to know your thoughts on it. Please leave them in the comments below. While you're here, you should probably make sure to subscribe. And if you don't have anything better to do right now, why don't you watch another video? Until next time, bye. Ooh, close.